let's say like there is a struggling person like oracle dba person who is actually struggling like, let's give them like concrete steps actually like you know because now you have so many choices it's easy to get overwhelmed right like how do they shape their career like you know like what what should they do like immediately okay so so let's look at it as uh, two things right one is there are database developers and then database administrators in any case uh, if you're already working in these two areas right so yeah i know you through your uh, youtube channel we connected a couple of years back and uh, like and then like we just been on linkedin i've been like a silent uh, you know just silent audience silent admirer of your content you've been working as oracle dba for a long time uh, 25 years now let's start with a short introduction um, you know would like you to introduce yourself as bharat introduce thank you for a good introduction bharat um, so my name is sharma paidpalli um very early on when i started with computers i well initially everybody starts with a game i started with prince of persia that was my first game on pc uh, but i have been playing video games even before that so that creativity which i bring from the video game industry to to my real work uh, you know i creatively think i take every experience bring it to the next platform and try to make it better uh when i started initially i worked on uh, dbs 3 plus uh, that's how i started with databases and i think the day one when i was sitting there and they they said okay this is how you manage your data can I can i ask which year is <laughs> um i i must have gotten into databases maybe first time in 94 or so um okay. that was only uh, at the education level not like working level Okay. Uh, but very early on i realized that i was born to be a, a data guy uh, mm -hmm. so whether it is admin or developer or, or whatever at that time i was not sure what i'm doing but i just started with dbs 3 plus um and then went into fox pro for a while uh, i worked on fox pro clipper um and those things are mostly learning uh, it was never at the work or anything uh, but even in those stages like you know when i developed projects they were ready to be deployed in, in production so they were very production uh, ready quality um oracle most likely i saw oracle first time in 96 or so and then um, i at that time it was very new to me i i did not have any feeling or anything um but when i took some courses uh, some formal learning um i fell in love with it i worked on it even today i, I administer like very large oracle databases um but you know like everything in life uh, there is a progression there is a change um i saw very early on that uh, databases were good to uh, stay with and i had a choice to either go into vc++ and programming or um, you know system administration but system administration was very difficult to get into in those okay. days i'm talking okay. about 98 99 yeah um then i chose to stay with databases which is oracle mm -hmm. i worked on mysql um, a little bit of db2 not too much i never got into sybase because that was already oracle was already you know way better than sybase in those days already mm. um but uh, slowly i started seeing the things change like in you know, the mobile came into picture then cloud itself uh, all the virtualization in the first 10 years of 2001 uh, to 2010 and then slowly people started moving towards cloud um, they did not call it cloud initially we we were just uh, looking at it as like you know a database as a service or how do you host your services on on somebody else's hardware Uh, which was very new we did not call it cloud yeah uh, okay um but when when i say we i'm mostly referring to the it uh, field uh, in general we all dat database administrators whether they work in one company or the other uh, what we saw was the industry itself was changing and going towards cloud and obviously that brings a lot of new technologies uh, you know amazon um and uh, netflix kind of these people who develop their own databases their own flavors of stuff um i think early 2012 or so uh, that is when i heard about nosql first time 
um, and imagine somebody who has been doing uh, only SQL for like uh, 20 years and the mind blows away and then say, well, what, why, why don't you want to not use SQL? Because that's the best way to query, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but then, you know, we have to realize we have to change. So yeah. I started looking at uh, NoSQL databases in 2014 or so. And uh, 15 is when I felt um, that, you know, okay, Cassandra is, is a good fit and I fell in love with it. Mm. Um, so right now I work on only two databases. One is Oracle and related technologies like Golden Gate, Exadata, mm -hmm. uh, Data Guard. That is all Oracle stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, work on Apache Cassandra. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll discuss a little bit more yeah. later on. Yeah. But once we get into that Apache Cassandra, you get into Apache Spark, uh, Scala, and all the other agile platform or DevOps or all these cloud te terminologies in place. Mm -hmm. So how? So again, like going back to your uh, the point where you had to choose. You said, like you said, sys administration was difficult to get in. I funnily, I heard the same feedback from someone. Like, uh, like they would say, "Oh, system administration is kind of complex and it's a little bit hard to get in." But once you get in, you're good for life. That kind of thing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so so why it was so difficult? If you want to spend like one or two minutes on that. Um, the time I was working on these systems, right, uh, in the early uh, 1997 to 2000, let's say, those three years, um, we did not have Linux. So there was no free version of Unix. Uh, we used to work on something called SCO Unix. I don't think this company exists anymore. It's called Santa Cruz Operations. Okay. Um, very expensive product. Uh, which is a Unix product. It is not a flavor of Linux or anything. Um, and it was difficult to get in because of two things, right? One is the systems availability. And then uh, people who knew the subject, um, they, were, they were very busy. So there was not much of education going on or it was very difficult to find the right people. Uh, so that is the reason in those days, uh, system administration was very difficult. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'm sure all of us have crossed paths with uh, system administration because of the ASM, the yeah. way Oracle is integrated into the Linux uh, kernel. And yeah. uh, we all work on SAN systems. Yeah. So we know how SAN works and stuff. So without knowing, even though we are all doing database administration, we do a lot of system administration. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's part of the job actually, definitely. Yeah. Uh, one question I want to go, you know, <coughs> start with this uh, or the second question basically like knowing what you know now right so you you've been like uh, again you, you've been in the industry for a long time knowing what you know now if you had to go back and make a choice again would it would it be database or would it be like a different uh, technology <laughs> um, so definitely database is is really good um, uh -huh. you know i told you that i love gaming Mm -hmm. uh, but I never had, um, you know, I have creative thinking, but I could never draw. So one thing if I would like to change is I could have become a game developer or something, uh, which is more like graphics, admin, uh, graphics engineer or something like that. Um, but database has been a real good um, place. I've been uh, in the industry for a while. I saw a lot of changes happening, uh, you know, small software and then becoming choose this large software like Oracle, you know, everybody complains about license costs. But uh, if you actually compare other softwares out there, I think Oracle is best. Uh, so far, it has been a very good software and, um, you know, company-wise, they've been progressing really well. Even Oracle Cloud uh, is really well built for databases. I'm not talking about like comparing other services like S3 or whatever, right? I'm not comparing Amazon to Oracle Cloud. Um, but database wise, um, you have Exadata in cloud for OCI. Yeah. Um, so database itself has been a very good field. Um, and I, I don't think any company will ever throw away data because every day you see how much we collect data or we share data. And um, that's how we study uh, the customer profiles or all that stuff. So it's, a, it's so only data, going to increase. The, yes. 
it's only going so to... data analysis is is what is going on today like you know how you learn based on the data uh, what we used to call it as artificial intelligence today came back with a new name called machine learning and to do that you need data mm. so without data you cannot do machine learning so yeah. i think data has been a good choice for me mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you know it it has a long potential because it's not going away so how has your attitude changed like day one let's say and then 10 years ago uh, from you know 10 years ago and now how has your attitude changed towards work uh, towards databases you know um, so let me put it in two perspectives right one is my own thinking Mm-hmm. and then it might not be suitable for everybody mm-hmm. and then i would say uh, the other thinking is uh, there are a lot of young people coming into the industry now and what their attitude should be towards learning right so first i'll tell you myself right when i started um, it was for me it was a career choice right i did not know anything else so i had to succeed in what i know um, that's how i learned oracle and i stayed with it Uh, because i just loved the technology and what i was doing um 2010 or so like in you know, the i i see that 2010 as the tip off point for cloud all the new technologies uh, which emerged from like you know java and java based technologies uh, all the no sql everything started after 2010 people started talking about no sql and all that um just for conversation sake i'm keeping it java and uh, database uh, field because i'm not uh, well suited to talk about languages or anything else so looking at that uh, from 2010 to 2015 there were lots of lots of new technologies in market uh, there are about 400 plus um, databases in the no sql field right now so what happens is uh, people who have been working long time Uh, in industry like me let's say for example if i was sleeping between 2001 and 2015 suddenly you wake up and you see this 400 different database flavors and you ask people everything is good like mm-hmm. there is there is no database which is not good for for certain use case it is very suitable like you know it depends on what use case you are trying to use it for now looking at all this commercial software right uh, let's oracle is one of the examples like if you take ibm db2 these have become too big right mm-hmm. and too expensive and they are very suitable for only specific use case mm-hmm. now today's world you have so many different use cases like if you look at graph databases mm-hmm. um if you look at like uh, distributed databases mm-hmm. right uh, there are databases which can stream data uh, you know live stream the data so um, and the databases which are developed by young uh, java developers let's say right um, they they don't need to uh, have all this reliability we are talking about with big databases they just have a very use uh, specific use case and they need to solve that use case that's how all the younger generation has developed all this new databases for example cockroach db mm. <laughs> okay it's a like so, cockroach db cockroach db cockroach yeah. cockroach is very uh, very good uh, database in fact mm-hmm. um, so um, you know j- just like java based databases there are so many other databases like say sila is developed in c++ so there are uh, different uh, adaptations of these databases right now from the younger generation perspective uh, whether it is us or them right Uh, whether experienced people or the younger generation what i see today is we need to we cannot learn one product and live with it for like next 10 years 15 years we just have to adapt to the technology there is so much happening and i think being open to learning is very important mm. so one thing i would like to mention and actually i would like to say thanks is i watched your python videos mm. now even though you are from a uh, db world of uh, you know work but you started taking a python which is very good for automation and your perspective which comes from the database side of it how how to use this python yeah. for your work right that really i appreciate uh, yeah. so if somebody did not watch your python videos right i would suggest them looking at them because they're they're very useful today 
And what you're doing also uh, is to adapt and change. Um, so I'm not just going to sit there and write PL SQL for my life. Mm. I would like to learn something new. And yeah. that learning attitude is most important today, I guess. Yeah, thanks for that, actually. Like, let's say like there is a struggling person, like Oracle DBA person who is actually struggling. Like, let's give them like concrete steps, actually. Like, you know, because now you have so many choices, it's easy to get overwhelmed right like how do they shape their career like you know like what what should they do like immediately okay so so let's look at it as uh, two things right one is there are database developers and then database administrators in any case uh, if you're already working in these two areas right and they see how you're behaving on the website like as a customer let's say i go to amazon i'm looking for a product i go to uh, on Amazon, I see the price and then I, I switch to another site. They're all using this uh, cross website cookies. So they, they know that from Amazon, you went to some other website, eBay, let's say, just giving you an example, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you end up not buying from these sites and you buy it from some, uh, some site like target.com, right? Um, now I'm not picking up on any of these companies, but I'm saying the technology wise, uh, there is so much happening in the data field um, now, you already know what is data, how to deal with it, like you, you have been administering it. Now, what I would uh, say is we have to just walk out of our comfort zone and start looking at uh, these new databases because I've seen a lot of people talk about, okay, you know, you can go to Cassandra and then throw away all your consistency, right? Because Cassandra is a tunable consistent system. It's not a consistent uh, system like you don't have acid transactions or anything. At the same time, I would challenge, say for example, if you're uh, recording this uh, reporting data, let's say every, every second you're recording how much temperature your CPU is running at, uh, do you really need to pay a million dollars to Oracle to store that data? It's not suitable. So you need a high frequency, very cheap uh, database of most likely open source which you can put it on multiple nodes and uh, make a five node cluster, six node cluster, right? Um, I know how much pain it is to take Oracle and build a four node cluster and then keep it running, you know? Yeah. Um, so imagine yeah, yeah. Um, we, we run a 16 node Cassandra cluster and then um, in open source world, like in Cassandra world, it is expected to have 10% of nodes down at any given time. So okay. nobody, okay. nobody really comes to us with like, you know, oh, there is an emergency. There are 10% of nodes down. We actually sleep through the night. We get up in the morning and we say, okay, why are they down? There is some reason for them to be down, right? Um, so what I would like to say to uh, DBAs or the developers who are already working in the data field, um, it's, it's not that difficult if you just open up and go look at the other databases. Um, like Cassandra is one of the easy ones to get in, uh, but there is a lot of other databases like yeah. MongoDB, uh -huh. Couch. And then uh, there are databases which allow you to do, um, use the same product and uh, present your data in different formats. So it's like you, you have one data store, but then you have so many wrappers on top of it. So for example, I'm talking about data stacks, which provides you graph database. Cassandra as a data store, but you can use that as a graph DB. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, take the data and load it into Spark and do analytics, or you can do streaming data analytics, which is mostly used in like credit card fraud detection stuff. And uh, all that is dealing with data. So we just have to take our perspective and say, okay, I'll be a little bit open to see what others are doing with it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, if you want more challenging uh, career, so go into the graph databases, which is very challenging and very interesting. So long back, before we had relational databases, right? There used to be something called hierarchical DB, mm. hierarchical databases. So you have your data represented in a hierarchy, and mm -hmm. then you imagine that's like a B tree, right? You traverse through the tree. So um, every use case is different. And uh, let's say, imagine Disney. Disney makes a lot of movies, right? 
So if you want to take an actor who worked in the Disney movie and you want to look at his profile, let's say you pull the actor's information and then what you see is a lot of uh, data attached to it, right? So they worked on four different movies. Mm -hmm. Now you can actually go into the next movie, what he worked in, and then that, that information now populates all the other actors who worked in that movie. And then you keep drilling through that, right? Like IMDb, basically. What is it? I, IMDb. I am, I am DB. Yeah. So, so imagine if you want to, um, if you want to store that kind of structured data, mm -hmm. and uh, you call it graph database, right? So you are actually traversing in graphs. So there, there are specific terminology which I don't know about, uh, but graph databases make it easy for you to find your information and uh, create that kind of uh, connected structure. Uh, one other example is LinkedIn. Mm. So LinkedIn, if you imagine that uh, how you're traversing through your connections, right? Now you have your connections and those connections have their connections and then you can travel through that tree structure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, the data can be stored and represented in a very good way using graph databases. Yeah. Okay. The, the same thing, you know, in Oracle, you would do a connect by, connect yeah. by start with query actually, right? Yeah. But, uh, so, so if you're a, if you're an expert with connect by, you can go maybe two levels, three levels, and then it gets confusing after that. Mm -hmm. um, whereas graph, you can go infinite levels mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's represented in a different way. Okay. So we have, so we have Cassandra, Cassandra and uh, MongoDB is really popular in the market. Uh, yes. What what is the like you know what is the perfect use case for Cassandra? What is like are are they like same Kind of products uh, so so let's uh, step back a little right we are coming from the relational database world where where we define tables and we said okay these are related to each other users or clients related to their products or what they're selling or you know websites um, if you look at that kind of relational model and uh, then you step back and say okay there is no sql databases um, NoSQL databases are um, largely divided into a couple of subcategories. So not every database is suitable for all kinds of use cases. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at document stores, right, when XML started, uh, they all started to store XML into the database. And Oracle can do this with X XMLDB, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, it has, um, it's called document DB something, XDB. Mm. Okay. That's Oracle's embedded uh, database for right. XML. Right. And you then have later, packages to, to work with XML as well in Oracle. Correct. So, yeah. Correct. So then what happened later on, uh, people started writing, the developers started to store their data or exchange the data in format of JSON, uh, JSON documents. Mm. So in NoSQL world, they said, okay, why don't we store this JSON object, which we have in, on hand in Java, or JavaScript, basically. They, they are, there are a lot of built-in libraries to traverse and use that data. So what they are doing is now they have to store this in the database. They have to do some conversion. So what if the database itself understands JSON and stores the document? So store it away in the same format, retrieve it in the same format they need in the application. And that's where the document stores came into picture. That, that's a database which stores documents. Mm -hmm. so MongoDB is the perfect example for that. So if you imagine uh, MongoDB stores JSON documents in its store, and then you will retrieve the document. Obviously MongoDB is running on a multi-node cluster. So you get reliability for like an you know, availability and um, yeah. uh, you know the data because your document is replicated into multiple places for reliability. Uh, now that is one category where you have document stores and yeah. there are a lot of databases in that category. Yeah. Um, two, two things come to my mind actually. When when you say MongoDB, I, I took like a MongoDB course when it was new in the market. So mm -hmm. one is horizontal scaling. The second mm -hmm. thing is uh, schema-less. Uh, you, yeah. know, you know, have, having a schema-less collection, like you know, basically developers, for developers that's actually really, comfort, you know, really easy to dump whatever data in the database. Like you don't have to go through this schema modification and then like very careful data population and things like that. 
So true. With Oracle, what happens is we have, we spend a lot of time defining that structure, you know, the organized way to store, um, and sometimes it becomes very uh, very heavy for the application. You might not need it, right? You need an application which quickly saves the data and retrieves it in whatever your developers need format, right? It's not specific to uh, the storage engine or anything. So that's where uh, Mongo uh, really shines because MongoDB stores the data in the format what your developers want. Um, and then uh, in, instead of picking MongoDB, right, there are a lot of other databases in that uh, area. Uh, one of them is Couchbase, CouchDB or Couchbase. Um, they're very, very nice databases for the same reason. Um, now, let's take Cassandra because one of the easiest thing for an Oracle DBA to get into Cassandra, uh, why it is easy is because it's a row column store. So we all understand rows and columns. Um, even though it is unstructured or you can have schema less, uh, but generally speaking, there is a row, there is a column, and we understand that terminology, partition keys or primary keys things like that. So Cassandra is easier to get in, uh, but what I would say is Cassandra is very flexible. One is I have seen uh, clusters which are large, like 20 node clusters to 800 node clusters, and it is possible to have more than 10,000 uh, node clusters. And Netflix runs one of the larger clusters, like Spotify, uh, Netflix, Apple has uh, been running Cassandra for years now. So Netflix, in fact, we know it is documented that 2009 or so they started using Cassandra. Um, so one of the easier things for Oracle DBA to get into database, no SQL database, is Cassandra is one of the best uh, fit for that. Um, then you have two more categories. One is a key value pairs. So you store very simple, what is the username, what is the password kind of key value and uh, it is kept mostly in memory so it is very fast in retrieval um, they use it for like session holding like you know your cookies basically let's say for example you want to keep that in the application server uh, redis is one example for that it's a key value store mm -hmm. um, what is the so document store uh, row column store key value pair and then graph databases so that's the fourth one so we, we talked about graph a little bit, um, and then now, obviously there are there are lots of these. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So is Cassandra like uh, is there like a managed Cassandra service available, or like you have to like just like Oracle, you you just get like infrastructure and then you need to do everything yourself? Yeah. So it's a good good question, right? I'll I'll spend a little bit explaining how Cassandra started with the open source. So still open source offering is there. You can just go to cassandra.apache.org and download the package and you can have your own hardware uh, in your on-prem or you can run it in EC2s on Amazon or Google Cloud, right? Uh, they support that. Now that doesn't uh, come with any kind of support. Uh, so your support is the community. Basically you, you hit a bug you uh, send um, you know emails to your community or the Cassandra developers, and then expect them to reply or respond with a patch or something like that. Um, that is the open source one. Now there is a company behind uh, Cassandra development. It's called DataStax, and they have several different offerings. One is DataStax Enterprise, uh, which you can run it on your on-prem or cloud. Uh, but this is a certified Cassandra product but they have integrated it with other products like Apache Spark, um, and then they have Kafka integrator. Um, they also have solar integration for search on your data. So DataStax is one of the very big company behind uh, Cassandra's development, as well as their enterprise offering. Um, you can also buy it as like database as a service if you, if you think of it that way. Uh, DataStax has an offering called Astra, so you would buy Astro license and you, you can just say, for example, I want five node cluster on Amazon and Astro will be able to spin up that cluster for you. And uh, you will do less management and more of your own product development with that Astro. Mm -hmm. um, they, there are a lot more offerings like uh, Amazon is right now working on something called key spaces. 
and that is uh, still in beta. I did not see it as a public release yet, but that is a Cassandra as a service on AWS, mm -hmm. and that's coming up soon. Okay. Uh, there is another company we should definitely mention is called Insta Cluster. Okay. And Insta Cluster also has a database as service or Cassandra as service. Um, they have integration with Apache Spark uh, where you can do analytics. So Insta Cluster also has offerings on cloud to, to have your Cassandra running in cloud. I just like to summarize. Uh, so Cassandra is a row column store. That's what you mm -hmm. said. And uh, yes. it's easy to transition for um, people and companies who are, uh, you know, who have experience in managing Oracle because people understand the row column uh, concept section, right? Yes. And it's easy for DBAs to transition to Cassandra easily. And, uh, and of course, it, it comes with all these partitioning, like sharding. I don't know what you call it, partitioning or sharding in Cassandra. Um, data is uh, replicated onto multiple nodes. Okay. Um, so instead of um, sharding has its own challenges. Okay. You need to know okay. where your shard is. Uh, in Cassandra, that is taken care by the cluster itself. Um, okay. So you okay. don't have to know where your shard is living. Okay. So uh, there is a little bit of difference, but yeah, the, that's mm. overall, that is a summary of it. Yeah. So replicas, you can have replicas and then uh, and it offers like eventual consistency if I, okay so eventual consistency and and you can also have uh, like immediate consistency or uh, basically uh, yeah that is that is where the tuning comes like you know uh, so all all your transactions don't need the immediate consistency mm -hmm. so for example if you're recording a log right that log Eventually, in your cluster, if all the all the nodes see the same data, eventually that should be good enough. But let's say you are taking a banking transaction, you are withdrawing some money, you want all nodes to see that transaction immediately, and that can be done through the code. Basically, you can say, okay, for this particular transaction, I want all the nodes to see exactly same value, and that can be done at the transaction level. So, so that's why it is tunable. Mm -hmm. um, tunable consistency uh, and the good thing with Cassandra is the hyperscale um, I have done this actually overnight you need to add like 10 different nodes into the cluster just to have increased capacity you can do that mm -hmm. um, and it is very easy to scale um, I have also done no downtime upgrades uh, mm -hmm. on 16 node cluster we, we don't shut down uh, the cluster or even, as I said, the 10 person nodes will be upgraded. Mm -hmm. And nobody, nobody literally knows that we are doing upgrades. It just goes on in the background. And we, after we are done, we just send out a shout out email. So thank you for supporting. There was no downtime. We did the upgrade. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's actually, always the, like, those are the interesting, those are some interesting projects, right? Like, you know, a DR activity or like an upgrade, like regardless yeah. of which database, like, you know, when, like this weekend, we had to patch uh, some of our Oracle databases. And then, you know, we, we had to do like switchovers for multiple databases. Uh, like, you know, and they all completed in less than five minutes. And so that was actually like, it was a very interesting moment. Uh, yeah, so that's great. So, and also like, I just want to make sure like people go and check out uh, your course. So you have a Apache Cassandra course. I haven't like checked it out yet, but uh, we'll put the link in the description and uh, you know, it should be like a very comprehensive course if I'm not wrong. So you, yeah. yeah, this, uh, this training, uh, so generally speaking, right. I used to do a lot of uh, public talking and a um, uh, lot of community events. Mm -hmm. um, I scaled down a little bit. I'm not young anymore. I have white hair, <laughs> you know. So I have not been doing training or or the community talks. Um, but this training, which I conducted maybe October or so, um, you know, I said, okay, I have video recording, so I think it will be helpful for people. Um, but other than that, I'm not regularly conducting any mm -hmm. training. Um, but I generally, you know, people reach out to me on LinkedIn. They say, hey, how can I get into, um, you know, Cassandra, Spark, uh, different technologies. Um, 
on a high level i know these technologies i don't write code on them on a daily basis like if you talk about kafka or things like that right mm. but i do use cassandra and spark uh, with scala a lot at work um, so it, it was my pleasure to just create a video training and if somebody uh, can can gain some knowledge out of it that will be good enough but course itself is like 10 plus hours of uh, training Mm. Uh, i try to i try to imagine a oracle dba how they can become cassandra dba mm. so that was the path we took and uh, we spent 10 hours discussing all the options yeah that's perfect actually that's that's what people are looking for right now a lot of oracle dbas and if it can be like explained in oracle terms and that's the best thing they can have right uh, sometimes sometimes it is helpful to talk in in the terminology we already know like you know uh, we have all the logs how they are recording the transaction and stuff compared to how cassandra does it so there was um, quite a bit of comparison um, but you know once you get in the first look it looks like oracle database but it is not it's a different beast so just be open minded about it hmm. like talking about this uh, these presentations right how do you how do you get these opportunities is it like word of mouth like people know that you're working on these things or like you kind of like go out of your way to market like how do you get these opportunities so mostly i have a lot of people who uh, who have been following on on youtube as you said and then there are a lot of people who are friends on linkedin um and uh, what happens is somebody is looking to upgrade their skill or you know they want to know what next right so a lot of people we only talked about database administrators but let's say if you look at any of these big data engineers right a lot of people want to come from etl and go into hadoop um and uh, hadoop is a very big platform there are too many products and uh, we are all confused about where to start with it right so even though i did not work on hadoop i can talk about it i can say okay this is what it is used for or how they use it uh, so what happens is there are a lot of friends who come to me and say how do i get in get into this market which is like you know hadoop there are a lot of a uh, lot of products under that hadoop umbrella right so i can guide them to get into apache spark things like that Uh, but as you said right i'm not very actively doing it um sometimes i get opportunity to record a video and put it on youtube uh, if it helps few people it's good enough so i i'm not actively doing it but mm. you know, people find me doing it somewhere here and there. Mm. that's that's something that i have found like you know after starting my youtube channel because it's not like one thing that's always like stuck in my mind like before i uh, you know i did any of these things was like i i don't know everything about this thing like i don't i'm not an expert so why should i like be teaching right so i always get into that mindset like even every day it, it comes up actually but then but but you should always think about like what you know what, what do you know and then try to teach that to others actually and that's and then by teaching you learn more about it right you like then you start putting your thoughts in order then some concepts that you think that you know very well is probably not that clear so you have to go do some more research and then when you come back and explain it and you get like interesting questions so you learn more so teaching is the best form of learning so and then and you get like all these uh, exciting opportunities as well right so to to broaden your network uh, you know so this is good for your career as well so like i i would encourage everyone to like start like a blog or youtube channel and that just like just write write it down and teach whatever you know and uh, so so definitely there is there is one thing we have to realize right how software was developed like uh, 20 years ago okay Uh, there used to be a company who would pay money to develop their software so you go inside the closed doors you write some code for them uh, like in c c++ and they sell the product commercially things have changed now right there are thousands of people contributing to open source projects 
and uh, don't get me wrong open source projects are really really good right yeah. now yeah. if you just go to apache.org and look at how many projects are free open sourced mm. uh, you can mm. see how many people are writing code for that so imagine there is a community out there who is writing code every single day and we are not talking about thousand people we are talking about like million yeah. people writing the whole code, world right? actually yeah <laughs> whole world is writing it that way um, yeah. somebody is publishing new article every few minutes now as a single person i think i cannot read them i cannot follow them i cannot understand them so i think we should have a community of learners who will go learn and teach to their community yeah so yeah. it should be a community based learning it cannot be a single person learning these things um, and it is impossible to learn these things on on our own oh yeah you know um, all the technologies like uh, java go uh, go is a, a language developed by google uh, there are a lot of products we did not talk about let's say how do we do our monitoring mm. uh, i'm working extensively on prometheus grafana platform uh, to monitor my cassandra databases right now we don't have it uh, but we are trying to come up to a working model and then we can make it open source on a github or something i'll publish those articles when they are ready mm. Mm. Um, but what will happen is if you can have a team of people and say hey guys why don't you go figure out what is this kubernetes right i have been hearing kubernetes left and right these days it is it is going to become like 2021's covid yeah <laughs> so everybody will talk about it mm. in industry yeah. so you know obviously at my level i don't want to go study what is kubernetes so it will be great if we have some people in our team like friends or very technical and uh, younger generation mm. so i can say hey guys go figure out what is this kubernetes and tell me what it is right so it's a community learning what i would think will be the best uh, for today's uh, today's learning path mm. yeah actually that's a great point and like recently kubernetes announced like uh, that they are not supporting dockers uh, so that actually that was a big news um, yeah kubernetes is yeah, is used in a lot of companies uh, like you know we that's a whole different world kubernetes dockers and like terraform that's that's what i'm doing right now mm -hmm. the one thing is like uh, like this year so, so why, don't you, why don't you tell about terraform a little bit i i don't know about it so yeah. i mean it would be helpful for everybody to know what is terraform yeah so you have aws everyone's aware of aws and you have uh, all these services ec2 dynamo db redshift and all these services so you need like uh, you know it's uh, people are not doing like mouse clicks to like create their infrastructure so you need to like automate it in you know like you need to create your dev uh, staging performance test all these uh, environments so so it's not going to scale uh, it's not easy to scale just doing these things manually so you need like uh, an automation software so you can use like uh, amazon sdks they can you, you can use sdks for python or java and you can uh, you can automate at that level uh, mm -hmm. so you have also have like uh, cloud formation that is amazon another amazon service which basically helps you to automate things on aws right so so cloud formation is only it, it only works with aws so terraform can work with basically any any cloud provider any you know it can even work with kubernetes so all you need to do is uh, just uh, install that plugin like for for example aws plugin and you can uh, automate your infrastructure basically so you can create your ec2 instances you can change the instance types you can say okay i want this security group i want uh, you know th this is a uh, this is dev environment so you can create different configuration for different things and terraform will will help you like you can just run terraform apply and it looks at your configuration files which is the desired state in cloud let's say and looks at cloud okay this is the state in the cloud this is my desired state and it will try to apply the delta like basically it will create whatever you need or whatever you 
specified in the configuration files. So can we can we call it as an orchestration engine? Yes, yes, it is basically an orchestration engine, and uh, yeah, that's all I know about Terraform. And uh, I was just going to say, like, I was kind of like in that uh, sort of like a sluggish. Like I was getting too comfortable in that uh, in database while all this cloud transformation is happening. I was learning a lot about business, entrepreneurship, and things like that. Um, like copywriting, for example, I, I used to write uh, on my parenting website, which is still out there, uh, called Parenting Improved. But uh, I sat in a wrong place today. I, I'm actually <laughs> being, <laughs> but anyway. So, but this year, you like I, to, I actually. You want to adjust the camera? What? You want to adjust the position, camera? Yeah, let me try this, actually, because it's getting harder for. I think you need yeah, to see it in the back. What is that? There is too much light in the back. So yeah. if you can adjust a little bit this way. Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, now, now this is better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, this is better. Yeah. Better than previous. Yeah. Come forward a little bit to the camera. Right. I think this is okay. okay. All right. Yeah, I was just saying that, uh, yeah, this year, I I got an opportunity to move to DevOps team, and then I started taking uh, learning seriously, like basically learning about all these things, uh, being in database uh, world for a long time. So there is all this like DevOps tools like J Jenkins and uh, like even Git. Right, Git was like like we DBAs are used to just shell scripts and then like. We, what is this version control you're talking about? <laughs> so we just modify things in production and then uh, set it up actually, right? And so, but yeah, but get uh, or pipelines. I think we should, we should mention Ansible. Ansible, Puppet, and all these things. So I learned about uh, DevOps a lot. I learned, so there is this company called Edureka, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, an Indian, sort of like an educational institution and uh, they teach all these topics actually. And if you're not like motivated to learn by yourself, you know, like, you know, sometimes you can just say, okay, you can buy a course and you will probably not be motivated to look at the videos by yourself. So you can like get into these uh, live courses, which are, you know, Edureka provides uh, these live courses and they are like, six weeks long and then they teach you a lot and at the end of the course you have to like do a project and uh, that you, you learn a lot uh, learn a lot from those things and it keeps you it keeps you accountable and that's what helped me actually like this year i don't know if i listed all the things that i learned at the high level at least I, at least I, if somebody said docker right i used to wonder what is it and things like that now i can actually like i can say okay oh yeah so what is pod, what is Docker, what is container in Kubernetes and things like that. So, um, yeah, definitely that is, that was one of the points I brought up earlier, right? We yeah. definitely need to know what is happening. Yeah. Um, you know, we cannot be under the rock we were talking about. Um, so basic cloud has brought this. So look at just Amazon's um, services. How much, how many AWS services are there? I, I did not count them recently, but there are more than 150 services. Yeah. So just knowing that they're, they're out there is, is the key. Yeah. I, you don't have to be like, I used to think it's like, oh, what is this Python? And is it like some kind of foreign language? And, but like once I jumped into it, like, you know, once if you're comfortable with basic programming, like let's say shell scripting or PL SQL, then it's like, it's all the same thing actually. And then in Python, it's even more easy. Like, you know, you don't have to define your data types and things like variables. Uh, so you can just like, it's flexible. Uh, again, similar to Python, like uh, with it, I, I was like thinking, oh, AWS, like it must be like really like a rocket science. And then I started doing the solution architect course and then you get the hang of it, like, you know, because so all I'm saying is like be confident about your, your computer science uh, fundamentals and you should be able to learn everything. And if you have a community and you can just like share your knowledge and 
and uh, yeah that's how you learn actually yeah but anyway so we, we talked a little bit about python right i um, mm. just a quick mention about it mm. um, so we write a lot of tools because we're all managing production databases right uh, we write our own custom tools like custom scripts um, what uh, happens with uh, any database when you're learning something new you create your cluster you have a bunch of tables there but data doesn't get automatically populated so i recently i was looking at python driver uh, so there is a python cassandra driver which which you can use to um, code in python and bring that data into cassandra database so if you go to my github like i'll share my github link uh, so there is a python cassandra driver related uh, project uh, basically you you create it sub uh, and uh, set it up and then it generates sales uh, transactions so you can say randomly between 1000 to 2000 transactions uh, whenever you run that code it will generate uh, let's say 1500 transactions and they look like there was a sale happening at that time uh, some random 10000 users will come and buy buy products so at least you have your data now and then you can do next thing my next thing to do is uh, i'm going to work on uh, something called uh, apache spark for cassandra i want to analyze how much sale happened in past one hour how much sale happened as of today as of now um, so year to month sale or things like that and then publish those metrics via grafana so it's a long journey are you but it, are you using that pig uh... What is it? Pig SQL or uh, there is a in Spark uh, there is a there is a pig. So, pig maybe. so yeah. the pig pig comes from the Hadoop world. Okay, okay. Um, so so what happens is uh, pig uh, is one of the languages they used in Hadoop. Uh, for Spark, Spark SQL is is there. Okay. So Spark engine itself has a SQL which mm -hmm. is the standard mm -hmm. SQL. Uh, but you can bring the data from Cassandra or any other data source. You can bring it from MongoDB in JSON format, convert it to Spark format, and then do your uh, structured queries on them. And then you create your analytics, um, you know, summarized data, and then push it to anything you want. Like, say, you can send it to Kafka, or you can then write it back to Cassandra. Um, but that's a bigger topic. <laughs> we can yeah. take that this time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've, we've been talking for uh, an hour actually. So, um, so thanks for actually your time. Uh, so, just one last question, and then we'll end the interview. So, who has been your inspiration, like in the database world? Like, uh, do you follow anyone, <laughs> or like uh, I know, like you're into gaming, and you're uh, you yourself, like so, you. Yeah. Um, so Larry Ellison, obviously, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I used to read, um, I, I still try to find time to read uh, articles written by Tom Kite, mm. uh, Ask mm. Tom, basically. Uh, so that's from the Oracle world. Um, I follow very closely a person from Datastax. Uh, his name is Mac Patrick McFadden, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a very good friend. Uh, so I uh, almost watch every single video he makes. He's he's on every single data stacks workshops. Uh, he talks a lot of Cassandra. So and then coming to gaming, I am addict to PlayStation gaming. So I've been playing uh, video games since 1987, long back. So I, I went from Atari 2600 to PC to PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 Pro. Uh, I haven't got chance to buy five yet. Uh, it's not available. I've been trying to get hands on one of them. Mm. Uh, in fact, mm. just today I went to my friend's place and I saw there they got a PlayStation Five from Costco. Very difficult to find one. Mm. Uh, right mm. now I'm playing uh, Last of Us Two, which is only for PlayStation exclusive. Uh, very good game. Uh, yeah. So inspiration-wise, there are a lot of people from different angles. So. Okay. Thank you for asking that. Cool. Yeah. Again, thanks for your time. I, I, my son is like he's, he's just starting with all these iPhone app games. Uh, the other day, someone was mentioning PlayStation. He was like, "What is PlayStation?" And I'm like, "Okay, I'm, <laughs> and I'm gonna like keep you in the 
in the dark for some time actually he's only 5 years and he's already got enough games going on and sometimes he talks about it on and on and on and uh, yeah it was great chatting with you actually uh, you know i think you mentioned so many things um, people should be taking notes and then all the resources that you mentioned i i i'll try to actually uh, I'll, i'll get in touch with you after the call and then we'll put that in the in the description and uh, thank you so much yeah definitely we sh- we will share all the links from both my websites or whatever youtube channels we talked about yes. you should yes. uh, also provide your links like the uh, youtube channel you have uh, you're doing a great work on python and other technologies you're talking about the recent technologies um, actually you have been going uh, on the various paths at the same time so that really helps a lot of people yeah um i focus a little bit only on specific areas of work um and also what i would think uh, will be very helpful as a follow up like you know if somebody has specific types of questions mm. and yeah. today's discussion was various topics and randomly picked topics um and then you know we can definitely bring in more people to talk about different areas of uh, technology so not just focus on database Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a lot more happening uh, in the other world like you know we we touched upon all this aws services uh, there is so much happening yeah we should definitely uh, have a follow up on this yeah yeah what i would think uh, what i think would be uh, very useful at least to me like you know because it's it's not easy like you said it's not easy to go read like this website and that website that blog and like this is so many white papers coming so if somebody can just like let's say take just a case study and then how they went from problem to designing the solution for it and then why they chose whatever they chose and all the decisions that made if they can just walk through at a high level and that actually like you that's where you get your inspiration from and you can take that and then you can look at the problems in your in your work uh like at your company and then you say okay yeah so i learned about that and i can how can i apply that here and that's basically how you va- add value to your company and that's how you like develop your career as well that's my so definitely so if that kind of structure if we can bring that like into like let's say like a, a brain trust or a mastermind and like people can present whatever they know and that will be amazing actually we should have like a conference kind of thing like i'll bring all the folks and you can bring your your folks and that'll be that's that's it's all in my vision actually that's all in my vision we'll get there <laughs> okay we'll get awesome. there soon Awesome. Thank you so much actually. And uh, nice and I wish you a very happy new year and uh, Thank you. Me- Merry Christmas and all that. Thank uh, you and happy to you all. Yeah. Happy new year. All the best. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you.